And I think the reason we've got along so well is, you know, grandparents and grandchildren have a common enemy. <laughs> well, anyway. Welcome to The Ruddle Show. I'm Lizette, and this is my dad, Cliff Ruddle. I hope each of you are doing more than good. Okay, so here we are in the aftermath of the COVID pandemic, and guess what? Dentistry survived. Yep, isn't that a relief? In fact, dental spending did not drop as much as some experts had anticipated. But you might be wondering, given the current state of dentistry and the state of the world, what is currently trending in dentistry? Well, we saw a list, and I have to say that we were very pleased because we noticed that a lot of the trending topics on the list were things we have talked about on the Ruddle Show in the past couple seasons. So yay for us, we're being relevant. So let's bring up the list now. Okay, I got this list from an article by Josh Howarth, who is a co-founder of Exploding Topics, and that's a company that monitors trends through internet searches. So we will have a link to the article in our show notes, but I see that number one on the list is dentists are investing in 3D printers. And this is great because we've actually talked about this on our show a few seasons back. Mm -hmm. They're printing all kinds of things, dentures, clear aligners, dental models, surgical guides. So a lot of things. Yep. What else is trending? Debt, margins, and freedom. <laughs> Uh, that all relates to solo practice is kind of going down. Uh, big trend going down in the last 10 years. There used to be a lot more solo practitioners. Uh, because of that, we're seeing more uh, consolidation of the industry with people coming together, so group practices. And, of course, there's the DSO. And the DSO we've talked about several times, and I'll just say a uh, shout out to Hartman, my friend Workman, but Hartland Dental is the largest in the world with over 1,000 practices, and I won't list the list here, but there are at least, at least six specifically endodontic DSOs. Okay, so group um, practice consolidation. Another thing that's happening is that digital marketing is now the preferred yeah. form of marketing. And dentists are using social media to pr promote their practices. Also, sub subscription-based coverage has become popular. And that's where a patient pays either a monthly fee or an annual fee. And included with that fee is maybe a couple teeth cleanings maybe some fillings, maybe some x-rays. But this is good for both patients and clinicians because for patients, if they're paying the money, it kind of commits them to come in. Yeah. And for dentists, it's like a regular Cash income flow. coming in. Yeah. So I see next on the list is one of your favorite topics. What is that? Oh, it would be lasers. You know, we've talked about lasers so many times on the show. We talked about lasers in the context of 3D disinfection, and that would be more like a light walker. 2940 nanometers of light because it blows up the water molecule. But recently we talked about photobiomodulation, PBM. And I'm all excited about that all over again, just kind of preparing for this show. But I won't list all the things it can do, but it's being used widely. Of course, it's not 2940, it's more like 650 to 950 nanometers. And it can do a host of things clinically. I think okay. you look like a hero. Well, we'll be talking about lasers more, I'm sure. Um, then there's been more of a demand for natural products like maybe herbal toothpaste or um, oral probiotics. And mm. the good news is, is that some of the mainstream toothpaste companies are listening and starting to offer some options that are maybe more natural. Um, teledentistry is big. We've talked about that on the show. Mm -hmm. And then I, I see we get to another one of your favorite topics. Well, I like AI a lot and artificial intelligence. I got caught yesterday looking at the father of artificial intelligence. So I got off tack. Anyway, it's think in terms of practice management. I just mentioned, you know, we have the sole practice going down. We have consolidation going up. We have DSOs climbing maybe 10%. So there's a lot, there's bigger offices, there's bigger machines, okay, more people. Well, a lot of times you get a lot of nickel and dime stuff that comes in on the phone. So you can get software like chatbots, chatbots, 
And you can do a lot of things with screening emergencies and things like that. So uh, if they need a real voice, they can get one. But I mean, just for appointment confirmations and things, you know, I think it's uh, it's something to look at. Okay. And then last on the list is there's definitely a trend to, um, toward wanting patients to be more comfortable and free of anxiety and fear. So mm -hmm. some practices tout sedation dentistry, but there's a lot to be said for having a welcoming, inviting, friendly waiting room that's clutter-free, where the energy flows like a gentle breeze. Oh my, you're talking about something we did earlier. Did I say feng, did you say feng shui? No. <laughs> now, if you don't know what we're talking about, we talked about it in our last show, so check that out. But now I think it's time to just gracefully flow into our first segment. <sighs> Today, we're going to talk about something that's very old that we're going to make new again. How about that? You know, in the context of canal preparation, mechanical, you know, versus manual, I'm going to come down to some really basic things today that are pretty exciting for me, and they've really helped me across my practice decades. So I want to share it with you. And we're going to look a lot at the motion and the movement. So the handle of the file is going to dictate the motion. And then of course, that's going to precipitate a specific movement that we have in mind. So let's get started on this. Uh, roll up your sleeves. This seems like it's going to be 1950s revisited, but it's going to be with a 2023 spin. All right, so you look in the background, you see the roots that visit us daily in our clinical practices are sometimes highly curved. Sometimes the roots are relatively straight, but remember the canals are more curved than the roots that hold them. So you might be all excited as 2023, you've heard Ruddle's lectures, you've heard other people's lectures, you've been reading, you've been watching, and you've been to their website, the Ruddle website, over and over and over, and you're now really ready to see well, why do we even need hand files? I thought that glider could get down there most of the time and that glider is going to spin. So the motion on the handle, you chuck it up and it's going to spin in rotation. The motor can adjust the torque and the speed and all that is done for you. So basically pick it up and use it. And in more open systems, you've noticed, we've noticed, we've all noticed about 63 plus percent of the time, mechanically, you can get right to length on the first instrument, no hand files, okay? So that's pretty exciting. Uh, Reed Poland, if you're listening, he's going to be on the show here in the future, and I told him he can't be on the show until he's done 500 canals with no hand files, and I want to hear from him and share with the audience what his experiences are. Well, of course, some of you think, well, I don't want to spin. I want to kind of replicate that manual hand motion, and so we can use unequal bidirectional angles these files are going to be somewhere about, I'm just going to say approximately eight-tenths of a millimeter. Kind of like in here, a little short of D16, which is up here. So you can see if you go from about a 16 at the tip, they both have about 16 at the tip. We have multiple tapers, and we can use these files oftentimes and achieve length with no hand instruments. Well, then once you have the glide path, you know the next move, a little shaping. We're not going to argue today about, is it a minimally invasive shape? Is it a more full shape? Shaping is shaping. It's up to the operator to decide what are their reagents they're going to be using? What's the methods for disinfection? What's the filling technique? And those are going to all be, uh, you know, imagined pre-treatment. And of course, that'll guide your clinical actions on how you shape. This is Pro Taper. This is Pro Taper Gold. Uh, still the number one selling file in the world. You can see the most commonly employed ones are four of them, and they spin. And so if you were spinning for your glide path, you're probably spinning. Uh, now I'm going to go to reciprocation. This is going to be wave one gold and wave one gold. Uh, there's four choices, but as you recall, it's usually a single file technique. And the angles are 150, okay? And then it disengages. So this is engaging, and this is disengaging. So if you do the math, we can net out about 120. So three cutting cycles is one circle. So even the reciprocating file is ultimately always spinning continuous circles. 
So that's a little bit about that. And of course, you're really excited. You're going, well, he mentioned early in the lecture that there was a little emphasis on hand files. So if we can do almost all of them mechanically, why would we even need to go further? So when you look at something like this and you're thinking it's got tapers from two to eight percent, it's multi-tapered, it's got a new cross section. Oh my goodness, it has a new cross section. So if you think about the new design on the Pro Taper Ultimate file, the three rings let you know it's not gold, it's ultimate. You can see that there's some innovation. But let's look at the tooth and let's remember teeth get a variety of different restorations, don't they? Uh, they might get something in here and then they might get something in here and then you might go like this and do an MOD. And all of a sudden you have a lot of restorations going. And I want to tell you, if you watch, what happens is you see recession of the pulp, you see constriction in the body, and oftentimes your apical one-third is relatively wide open. Isn't that something? We've talked about that in other shows. That's why there's a lot of emphasis on removing canyons of restrictive dentin to get apical one-third control. So you might break that instrument if you try to stuff it into a restrictive canal that is not ready to accommodate its tip in a passive manner. Oh, it's really quiet. I like this. The audience is really listening all over the world. I hear you listening. All right. So there is, though, a room for hand files. And I want to tell you, the more I have thought about building this lecture, it became more and more exciting because I knew most of you are going to already be asleep but maybe you set your alarm for right now because you're getting to the part that can take you to the next step on your career. If you're a master clinician, you're listening. If you're a novice dentist, you're really on the edge of your seat. If you're a resident, you got to learn this stuff. <laughs> this is the stuff that makes you the specialist that you esteem to be. So we need to have the grace of the hand and the hand can employ a lot of different motions on the handle, and that can produce a lot of different file movements. So what can we think about? Well, you open up the tooth, you got your access, you probe with an explorer, and you're going, geez, there's just a little catch. You look at your mechanical file and you're saying, I don't think so. That would be a unnecessary risk. So we have to understand we can use a specific motion in the body, okay? Oh, I love doing this. So we have coronal, middle, and apical one-thirds. I have said for decades that each third is about three, four, or five millimeters, and that means we're going to use body work, and that'll be the upper six to ten, the six to ten millimeters. So, in the apical third, there's a completely, entirely different way we bend the file and the way the motion on the handle is, and it produces a different movement. See, it's not all mechanical. Now you're thinking a little bit. There's lots of options for the manual filer. And then, of course, when you get to length, let's uh, clean this up right now. You're not, let's say it wrong, you are not establishing patency before you ever entered the tooth it was absolutely open and patent, so you're verifying patency. Change the language, change the thinking. You're verifying, you're confirming that the canal that was already patent isn't now been blocked or occluded with a collagenous plug of tissue or dentinal debris, the fatal flaw in endodontics is mud. So different motions on the handle, different movements are gonna be produced in the file, and I think it starts to really get a little bit of exciting because some of those cases you struggled with, you were probably just trying to do them all mechanical. And if you're a younger dentist, it's mechanics out there and it's a mechanical world. And I'm using my mechanical files in a mechanical way today. All right, I'm a mechanical man. I'm a mechanical man. Well, how about going back to something that's been taught by Dr. Herb Schilder decades and decades ago, but certainly in the 60s, certainly in the early 70s, this was the way we learned. And since I was in Boston at Harvard, Schiller was at BU, there was a lot of exchange between residents and students and going to classes with one another, and we began to understand motion and movement. I don't know that any grad programs in the world really talk about handle motion and movement. 
That's why I'm doing it today because it's a very old topic. Schilder said, let's work in the body. Let's get the canyons of restrictive dent eliminated. So what do you say? Get rid of that. And let's just think of the upper six to 10, the upper six to 10 millimeters. How can we get that open so we can get access into the most delicate part of the system, the apical one third? That's where you have the divisions. That's where you have the branches. That's where you have the bifidities. That's where we have the blocks, the ledges, the transportations, and all the things that we've been talking about on this show and, and all the ways to manage those upsets. So if you take a file like Shielder said, let's just pretend it's blue. So let's make it a 30, not a 60. So it's going to be three tenths of a millimeter. It's a 30 file. He said, take a brand new file out of the box. And he said about D8, so there's 16 millimeters of active portion. There's 16 millimeters. D16, D0. He said, D8, just put a big curve on it, right in the belly. I want you to know that I know, if you look at the end of this instrument, it's a straight line. There's no curve there. And you're thinking, oh no, I went to West's course. I went to Marsh 2's course. I went to Ruddle's course. They said, put the bend towards the terminal floats of the file. We did when we were in the apical third, but we're in the body. And the bodies of most canals are relatively straight. So Shoulder said, based on the bend, based on the bend you place, you're going to have a spring effect. This is Mechanics 101. In this method of opening up the body, understand the tip of the file is never to engage. It's passive. But by putting a big curve in it and stuffing that down into a restrictive canal, when you spin the handle, you're going to get an envelope of motion. You're going to get an envelope of motion. And the belly will start randomly carving, randomly carving, randomly carving. So you put the file in, see this, see this? Just shovel it in, gentle, think of a feather, think of kissing a baby's forehead, shuttle the file in. It'll become snug because this bend will bind and then you rotate the handle clockwise as you simultaneously withdraw the file. So watch the hand, rotate and withdraw, rotate deeper and withdraw, shuttle it in a little bit deeper, rotate and withdraw. If you're withdrawing on the outstroke, you cannot advance the instrument, Shielder understood. No ledges, no transportations, no deviations. The file's loose at its terminal extent. And so by going through a file, this is just to show you how to use it, you can produce envelopes of motion. Now, it's interesting to note that we could have bent the file even more and we would have had a bigger spring effect. We would have had even a bigger rebound and it's that spring effect. So every time you take the file out of the tooth, you got to rebend it, get the spring back in and you can open up the body. Now, let me explain something. As you begin to remove canyons of restrictive dentin, think outside the box. It's not this or this. How about it's both? You can get a little space, it's safe. Put in a mechanically driven file and finish the pre-enlargement. That is now uniting all worlds to a more perfect outcome. All right, so what's next? We know how to use it, we know how to bend it. We can bend it little, you know, little thin roots, little small bend. Bigger bulky roots, root bulk and form, you can have what? a little bigger curve, and you're up in the body. The thing to make it come home for you is Schilder always used an isosceles triangle cross-section. So the raw stock is triangular, and it's twisted on its long axis, and you have a fluted reamer. So Schilder always did the body work with a reamer, not a file. Files are down here. Reamers are up here, okay? So Schiller didn't just say, you know, go through the series and get this thing pre-enlarged. Notice how we've got this thing opened up now and we have greater access to the apical third. Some of you learned clinicians are always thinking ahead. You're going, my God, I can now pre-curve my little 10 file. I can pass my pre-curve 10 file through the pre-enlarged 
body of the canal reviews the envelope of motion and my file will arrive in the curvature curved. And now I can start going with the files. Johnny West says, follow, 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 John West. All right, so it wasn't just one pass through a series of reamers. Uh, disregard the uh, nomenclature on the handles. These look like files to me. It's the concept I'm teaching, and I made a comment. He used a triangular reamer. Schilder said that for him, recapitulation, recapitulation was going through a series of files once, and they would go in, and if you looked at their rubber stops, they would there'd be big jap gaps, there'd be dimensional changes from stop to stop on sequentially larger files. But he said, "What? Go back and recapitulate again, and go back and recapitulate again." And after about three or four passes, guess what? The rubber stops will show you the perfect shape. Each larger file is moving further and further away from length. And if you look at those stops, it's like going up a stairway. So the work was done when the stops roughly approximate about a stop difference between successive instruments. Recapitulation. There's another recapitulation, and that's down here. And that's clearing the frame of mud with a clearing file. We say recapitulate, recap with a 10, please. Recap with the Smart Light Pro Endo Activator, please. Let's put these ideas together. So that was a little bit about the envelope of motion and going back to the Herb Schilder idea. And what some of you never knew, that became ProTaper. The whole concept behind ProTaper was the envelope of motion. That's why, uh, I'll just say this first, that's why these files have increasing percentage tapers, increasing. So as you go up the file, the file is going from like 2% and it can go up to maybe 12%. It can go from 2% to 10%. We built these files based on the envelope of motion. So they're these shapers, they're made to work here. They don't really do much up in the apical third. The apical third is just kind of following the glide path that you have confirmed. So it's kind of interesting. Shoulder died. I believe it was in 2006. We launched in 2001. He said to John West, and he said it to me, that if he was a practicing clinician, it was the next logical progression, ProTaper Gold. In that case, it would have been ProTaper Universal or even ProTaper. They were all built with the shapers having increasing percentage tapers. You might notice this is what, this diameter right here on the SX is 1.2 millimeters. Listen, for you minimally invasive people, some of you've pulled off the FX, although it remains the number one selling file in the world for body work. But if you think it's a little too big, then you can go to Ultimate. Ultimate, Pro Taper Ultimate has a single shaper, and that shaper is what? One millimeter wire. So this will give you a skinnier body. This will give you a fuller body. Look at the x-rays, look at the CDCTs, look at the images, begin to think, visualize, plan, and then grab the instrument and execute. So at any time after hand files or while using hand files, one can go to a more efficient instrument. Remember, in the new era, hand files are really just to secure canals, just to have that slight path each time, every time, all the time. What else can we say except to acknowledge the author? I had a, a nice discussion with Robert Kaufman. He's up in, we call it Winnipeg. Well, they say Winnipeg in Canada, but I always know it this time of year is Winterpeg. But we have some good friends up there. We've had another guy on this show from up there too. Uh, Ken Serrat is from Toronto. And uh, I'm like the third author, but we wrote this many, many years ago. It's approaching 20 years ago, and it was from concept to creation, and it was all the description. You didn't read the article, did you? Hell, I didn't even read the article. Well, I wrote it, part of it. So anyway, we explain how uh, this file right here that you bend, it can have tapers of two, four, six, eight... Schilder understood that a 2% tapered file, 
a 2% tapered file, if it was bent right, if the motion on the handle was right, it would produce a movement where a 2% file could give you 8 to 10% taper. That was unheard of. Most endodontists never understood it. Most people never learned it. And most people have no knowledge of this. So understand that that hand file can be used at speeds that approach 300 RPMs regularly. People don't think like this. Kids go, go, I'm a mechanic. Are you kidding? It take forever. Did you know if you watch the masters, they can open up a body in probably four or five minutes. They can get to the AP Cool and third, establish patency. It's a few more motions with different bends, different handle motions, different file movements, and they can get that blend of that deep shape and blend it right back up into the body. So before you surrender and say, no more hand files, I'm a busy person and I don't have time for such mundane things, remember the flexibility, the speed, the motions and movements, it's credible. So let's go on, let's go right on. Okay, so negotiate the apical one-third, and it's a different motion. So in this case, you grab your brand new tin file out of the box, it's sharp, and you're going to use a little curve towards its terminal extent. You're going to simulate the curvature as evidenced on the radiograph. Now you're going to say, Cliff, I can't even see the apical thirds. Well, what if you see this? Remember, the lesions of endodontic origin form adjacent to the portals of exit. So there must be something coming up in here that bends. There must be something that bends. So learn to bend your file to simulate where the lesions are on the radiographic images, all right? And if you do that, you're starting to play big ball. And now you're going to play above the rim if we're playing basketball. And we're going to snake that file, shuttle it down through the body. It'll be passive, and then it'll get into the curvature pre-curved, and it's now a different motion. It's a watch-winding motion. Now, this morning, just for kicks at 4.30, literally, I Googled it because Phyllis and I have long ago spoke about this and said young dentists don't even know what watch-winding is because their watches don't need to be wound. Go Google watch-winding, and you'll have an endodontic lesson 101. In fact, Google watch winding, quote, hand files. And there's thousands of things up. Well, Ruddle has talked about this for five decades. And it's this. It's just this. And you, you know, it's just get back up on the handle. We're going to show that. You guys are down here like it's a tennis racket. You like think you're playing baseball. It's a gentle motion. It's passive. It's light. And it's just wiggle, 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 wiggle. When the file's snug, it means it's been pulled down. The blades are lightly tapping into dentin. It could be circumferential dentin. It could be two-wall dentin based on the cross-sectional configuration of the canal. And we're going to wiggle that file down. When the handle is snug, snug, not tight, not tight. There's a difference. Snug versus tight. Then the operator pulls. Feed it in, pull. Feed it in a little bit deeper, pull. Every time you pull, just like the envelope of motion, you're cutting up, up, and away, TWA. You're flying now. You're not digging, you're not gouging, and you're not forcing files towards length. So snug it in, pull, and do that repeatedly until your file reaches your desired working length. For Ruddle, that would be the radiographic terminus recognizing the file would be a little bit long. What's the third? So we had an envelope of motion up in the body. We had a little watch winding down the evical third. And now we got to make sure the canal remains permanently patent. Say patency as you walk around. Patency, 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 patency. Patent guy. All right. If you're patent, everything good comes your way. Okay, zippity doo dog, zippity day. All right, so now watch. It's just in and out. It's not this. It's just linearly in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, until, as West would say, Dr. John West, loose when the file is loose. And you could take your nose, if you could get it in there. If so you get your head inside there and on the rubber dam, you take your nose and push the file to length. That's loose. And a loose 10 means the case is yours. 
All good things will happen. The shape will expand as you determine, and you'll be able to disinfect, hold your reagents, pack with three dimensions, have a capture zone, all of the good things we've talked about. In and out, in and out, until the file is loose. So if you watch the movie, notice where I'm holding the file. If you just looked at that slide for 30 seconds, you could have had another two hours course and gotten CE for it somewhere in the world because there's so much to learn. Where am I holding the file? How am I holding the file? Is it a violent move? Am I twisting the file? Oh, no, he said in, out, in, out until the file is loose. And when it's loose, take it out, and the case is yours because mechanical files will follow a loose tin. All right, so we've talked a lot about this. Isn't this cool? And I think I'll leave you with the Sistine Chapel, and I think I'll leave you with Michelangelo, and he made the creation, and the creator has the ability to help you keep learning and charge your endodontics ever forward. Thank you. We have a new segment to debut for you today, and it's called Recommended Resources. And the point of this segment is to highlight either a website, a teacher, or an organization that we feel is an excellent source of dental or endodontic information and could be really useful to clinicians, maybe even game-changing. Good. So for this first installment of Recommended Resources, we'd like to refer you to our own advanced endodontics website at noruddle.com. Um, now, I don't want to cause confusion, so I'm going to clarify this right away. We have two websites. We have the Ruddle Show website, which is exclusively devoted to the Ruddle Show. And then there's endoruddle.com, which is the topic of this segment and is the home of all things Ruddle Endo. Okay, so let's to start, why don't you just give the audience a general overview of what a clinician might expect to find at endoruddle.com? Okay, well, I guess to back up a little bit earlier, uh, having traveled the world and having many relationships internationally, I wanted to stay connected. So I think mid to late 90s, we started some form of the current website. It's grown a lot. I'm very proud of uh, your sister, Lori. Um, the idea was to take the content, clinical content, and to give it to people so they could, you know, read, watch, and listen. And I should further break it up into, we kind of had the diagnosis clean shape pack as a pod theme. And then we kind of have a retreatment in the breadth and depth of that field and then surgical root canal treatment. And so you could go there and watch this stuff and mostly it's all free. And uh, there's a list down here because I don't go there myself so much, but there's articles, DVDs, uh, streaming videos, inventions, supply lists, technique cards, that kind of stuff. Okay, well, I want to point out that there used to be a lot more about Ruddle courses and lecture travel, but with COVID and then the advent of the Ruddle show, you've been traveling a lot less and you have been focusing a lot more on the Ruddle show. So one thing that's on the website that I know that you're very proud of is something that we refer to as just-in-time education. So how did you come up with the name just-in-time and what is your thinking behind it? Tai Chi Ono. Uh, tai Chi Ono was a really great guy in Japan. Uh, came into prominence around the end of World War II. And he, you know, they were completely devastated and lost a lot of lives. So they were working on their manufacturing and their whole infrastructure. And since it was completely wiped out, they could start from scratch. What would be the best way to do it? So he leaned heavily uh, on this thing called Kaizen. Kaizen is where you are on the line and you look at what you're doing and you don't just do it. You study the process and you make suggestions. And out of that came the mantra, continuous learning. Also, uh, tai Chi Ono was very big on lean manufacturing. You don't just produce a bunch of cars or a bunch of this or that. I should probably say when I said cars, he was the Toyota Production System, TPS, and that's famous around the world. TPS borrowed heavily from Henry Ford, and that was uh, the Industrial Revolution and production. Uh, 1950, the grocery store model, uh, barcodes and inventory in the shelves just in time. And so he took all these ideas, Deming's ideas. He was the guru of uh, organization and quality control. And together it came up with actually their manual for TPI, TPI uh, TPS, sorry, Toyota Production Systems. 
I love that story. And I thought, well, as a teacher, I need to have just like not too much education, not all crazy. I need to have it just in time based on what dentists most want to learn. That's the guy on the line that's telling you the processes to make it better. So just in time was a thing that I thought would be ready to have a short little clip of something before you walked in to see your next patient. And it was the theme would be watching something that you're going to be doing momentarily. So just in time for your next patient. Okay, well, that's great. We have now over 100 just in time movies on our website. And they range from about two minutes to there's a few that are about an hour. And they include clinical techniques with animations, live breakout sessions from Ruddle lectures, other lecture clips, introductions to new products, etc. There's a lot more they even cover. So these just-in-time movies are all available to watch at no cost. Now, we also do have some DVDs that are for sale to stream. We have a Shape Clean Pack DVD that's 180 minutes. And then there are four non-surgical retreatment DVDs. Tell us about the retreatment DVDs. Oh, didn't you see the glint in my eye? <laughs> uh, we called it affectionately the brick. There was four of them. The first one related to what? What do you do first? Disassembly and then identifying aberrant, previously missed or uh, mineralized canals. Uh, there was a good part in there though about communication because when people have uh, a tooth that's failing and it was done by somebody else, they're not so happy. So there's a lot of emphasis how to get the patient to focus away from maybe their upsetness and anger and look at the stepping stones to success and we can all focus on what's next towards success. So I think the languaging in there was really good. And there was a thing on profitability because if you're gonna do retreatment, you gotta get paid for it. The next tape was, uh, I'll just make it, uh, removing fillers, gotta purchase silver points, carriers and paste fillers. The third tape was broken instruments. Whoa, that never happens. And uh, post removal and the post removal was metal and non-metallic. And then all the parameters you think about. The last one was really, uh, you know, we've talked all around it, blocks, ledges, transportations, and perforations. So that's kind of a little summary of what's in there. Okay, well, I want to point out a couple things. First, the updated retreatment DVDs are from 2004, and the updated Shape Clean Pack DVDs from 2008. However, they are still quite relevant because although technologies have changed, the concepts and fundamental techniques have largely endured. The second thing I want to point out is that all parts of the Shape Clean Pack DVD are included in the just-in-time movies. The value of the DVD is that it organizes the information for you. Now, not all parts of the retreatment DVDs are in the just-in-time movies, though. That's different. Um, there is retreatment footage in the DVDs that is exclusive to those DVDs. So I just wanted to mention that if you're wondering, well, these are... Are, these DVDs are too old, or maybe you thought, oh, I'm going to go buy the new DVDs, but you already have the DVDs. So, In the world of retreatment, uh, you might have an occasional new tool or something, but it's the concepts that carry you always forward. Okay, why don't you tell um, the audience about the inventions part of the website now? Well, I'm pretty proud of the inventions. Uh, sometimes I used to be a little embarrassed to talk about it because it s tended to put a little more focus on me than I wanted, but um, you can look at it, but I've probably invented somewhere around 12 to 15 items and probably 10 or 12 of them are selling every day internationally. And when I say inventor, I'm either a single inventor or a co-inventor because I had some remarkable people, as you know, in my life that have helped with these wonderful projects. I think what I, Lori did that was so cool is every invention stands alone on its page. And I think you can then read about it and it's kind of technical, but then you can say, well, uh, I might want to go to a technique card and see how to use this. So you can go to technique cards and click. Uh, you can go off and read an article, a clinical article, PDF. You can watch a movie. So you can tie the inventions to what how they work clinically and what you're doing. Yeah, I really like that about our website, how the Lori. information mm -hmm. <laughs> the information is so interconnected, like a network. Like, for example, if you search something like, say, you search filling lateral anatomy. Well, a wealth of information will come up in the form of PDF articles you can read, just-in-time movies to watch, um, blogs, 
FAQs from the website. So a lot will come up and you can learn in many different ways, watching, listening, what we talked about. I think you have something to show everyone, right? Yeah, I brought them in. I got some technique cards. Uh, there's 10 of them here. And, uh, you know, we wanted to have uh, a little card. It has typically, you know, like if you're talking about a technique, I don't know what we want to look at, but if you want to look at files as an example, or you want to look at anything, you see the product and the technical information is on the front and on the back, it's how to use it in a step-by-step -step manner. So I always thought, why are we doing this? We have all kinds of handouts at courses, but colleagues love these laminated cards. We want them to fit, you know, right in the breast of your coat. See that? Just fits right in there. And, um, you know, people all over the world say they use them and they have them chair side and they have them everywhere. I always thought chair side would be a little funny, you know, to, <laughs> you know, and say, anyway well yeah i know the people the course attendees really love those and they would call and they'd say you know i forgot my technique cards with the ring on it and we'd say oh well they are also available on the website to download oh, right. and then they thought well i like the ring though and uh, <laughs> and how they're like this so did you punch them and yeah, show a ring you could download them from the website print them out on like cardstock and do your own thing and kind of make this all right, well, we also have supply lists that have been recently updated. They're on the website. There's over 50 runnel articles that you mm. can download at no charge. Um, definitely check it out because there's you'll probably find some other gems that we haven't mentioned. Um, I just wanna emphasize again that almost everything on the website is free. Uh, you only need an email and a password to create an account. And the site is also mobile friendly, so you can navigate from your smartphone. Now, Dad, who do we have to thank for this great website? I think you've maybe said her name a couple times already. Well, I said it as a, a mystery guest, but she's not a guest. She's the producer. She's your sister. She's my daughter. She's my wife's daughter, and her name is Lori Ostavani. <laughs> Lori Ostavani. Lori, I'm looking right at you now. Uh, kudos to you, kiddo. Uh, you've done some magnificent things. It touches my heart. You've taken the website and all these things, and you've made it personal, and you've taken them to next-level stuff. So, hmm. Did she do it all by herself? No. Uh, <laughs> I My job, I don't know anything about the website, everybody out there, but I, I have to produce content. <laughs> so I have to run hard and keep doing clinicals. Um, we want to thank... Larry Murphy, uh, he's uh, the webmaster, I guess you would say. Lori might be the webmaster, but he was the guy behind the scenes. And then the Ken, company's final code. Yeah, Ken the coder. He's from Bangkok. He's coding over there as we speak. And um, I want to say a big shout out to Glenn Derbyshire. And he has an editor called Mitch Gujan. And I think uh, Ken, Larry, Mitch, Glenn, me, stir in a big part of Lori. And you've cooked what you got. Yeah, Lori's Lori is um, does all the final overseeing, the maintenance. She's like anything that's put on the website has to be approved by Lori. So she kind of monitors everything, and and she has a very like special way of looking at things, and very clear and aesthetically pleasing. So the design, she just I I think she's mostly behind it, honestly. Well, yeah, uh, because if you think about it, I can give you a puzzle a 5,000 word puzzle in a box, it doesn't make it a puzzle, does it? So she took pieces and that was her uh, wonderful thing. She's got an eye and she is really organized with her computer background, so she's a good thinker. Yeah, so a big thank you to Lori for the great job managing the website. Be sure to check it out. I just wanna emphasize that you need to subscribe to both Endo Ruddle and the Ruddle Show that they're not, one subscription does not cover both websites. However, we do try to link them together as much as possible. Well, that was a very informative segment and thank you for all the information and thanks to Lori for creating a masterpiece website. To close the show today with another grandkids segment because you know what they say about grandkids they restore our zest for life and our faith in humanity absolutely all right well you're probably already aware that my mom and dad have five grandkids two from me and three from Lori, and you've seen them make some appearances over the seasons on the ruggle show 
And you might also be aware by now that my son Isaac works on The Rebel Show. So the whole idea behind this segment was every season we were going to devote a close to one of the grandchildren and find out more about them and what they're up to. So we've already talked to Isaac and we last season we talked to Sophia Laurie's daughter at Westmont College. And today we are joined by my daughter, Eva, and she's going to tell us about her beauty aesthetic. So welcome, Eva. Hi, thank you guys for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, great to have you on the set. And uh, we've always been like best friends. And I think the reason we've got along so well is, you know, grandparents and grandchildren have a common enemy. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, it's great to have you on the set, babe. Thanks for having me. Okay, so why don't you start off by telling us what you are up to right now? Like, what did you most recently accomplish, and what are you most looking forward to in the immediate future? Okay, so at the end of last year, I graduated from the cosmetology program and then went on to take the state board exams, mm. and I passed, so now I'm officially a licensed cosmetologist, and I'm just looking for a job now. So. And what about what are you? I know that there's something you're really looking forward to yeah. later today, even. Yeah. Um, my good friend Leo, he is coming all the way from the UK. He's been here a few times as of last year, but he's now visiting again and he gets along with my family and friends all super well. And he's coming tonight. So we have to go pick him up after this. <laughs> So can we say it's a big day? I mean, you're on the show and you're going worldwide and then yeah. Leo's coming worldwide guy. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy he's coming because I'm going to help him learn how to speak correct English. So we're <laughs> going to work on that. Uh, you know, they always tell me I don't speak the good English. Yeah. And then I love talking sports with him as long as I stay very narrowly focused to soccer or football. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, so we're going to be watching a lot of the Tottenham Hotspurs, I'm sure, on TV. Yeah. And... Yeah, when Leo comes to, he comes for not just a weekend or a week. He's going to be with us for three weeks, and that's actually his shortest visit so far. So wow. we're excited to have him around. All right, well, I'm very proud of you, and I know he is too, and we all are, for for completing the cosmetology program. That was about a year. Um, and she does my hair, by the way. So <laughs> Yeah, and she does my face because it's wore out two bodies. So, you know, I have Eva now. Yeah. So, secret what, weapon. What all did you learn in cosmetology, though? Because I know it's not just yeah. only hair. We learned a lot of basically the fundamentals of everything to know about hair. But in specific, we learned about hair cutting, hair coloring. We learned updos for weddings and stuff hmm. like that. Um, we even went into nails. Um, we went into makeup. We also even covered a bit of the esthetician portion which is more facials and waxing which i actually found really cool and it's a whole separate program but maybe who knows i can do that as well so okay well our viewers can see from this graphic that we have behind us that you, there's other pictures that aren't just hair and nails there's also a lot of artwork is this your artwork? Yeah. So before I did the cosmetology program, I went to Santa Barbara City College and got my associate's degree in studio art. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I kind of like to do art I, like on the side, I would say. Um, and this is some of my work up here. You can kind of see that it's very colorful, abstract. I tend to like to create pieces that are very kind of out of the ordinary something a little unexpected i never like the viewer to i like to, the viewer to use their imagination you know so like the one hanging on my wall in my study yeah wow what an abstract explosion of colors it's right there i see it every day i get juice out of it yeah yeah eva is like a really good artist she always does something that like when i when i look at her, her artwork i'm like Oh, I wouldn't have thought to have done it that way, but that's really interesting. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, lo I love your art. And actually, this one with the butterflies and the pink, that was actually for me for a birthday present. That was my birthday present. Oh, that's nice. All right. Well, now that you have the studio art degree and also the cosmetology license, what do you, that's a, actually a good combination of talents. What would you want to maybe do for a career? Well, I definitely think I want to start at least just get out in the like, world of hair and start working in a salon and working with clients. I think the most like special part to me is working with people that maybe aren't feeling good or like 
make them feel better about themselves and have like self-confidence. It's like you never know what someone might be going through that day. And just like the little tiniest things can make someone feel good, making them feel pretty. So. Wow. What about long term? Long term, I have some long term goals. Um, I've always wanted to become a tattoo artist. That is something on my artistic side. So that's always been really cool to me. Um, also, I've like thought about working on sets for movies as like the hairstylist, the hair, like whatever, the makeup artist, the wardrobe even. Mm-hmm. And who knows, maybe I could get good enough to win an Oscar for that. <laughs> we'll see. That's reaching a little bit, but... <laughs> You never know. Got to keep my options open. Uh, and you're going to be a smash hit because you know what uh, the world of dentistos knows. If you want to make people feel good about themselves, okay, and couple that with training, desire, and determination, you're a smash hit. Yeah. You'll be a smash hit. Okay. Well, you once told me, maybe even it was about 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, you told me when you were two no <laughs> no when you told me that your dream job was to work at the kialani resort in maui hawaii by the pool and you wanted to do henna tattoos and you uh, wanted to give the guests henna tattoos is that goal still in play maybe we'll see i never like to say no but we are going to the kialani this summer so maybe i'll have to ask around you're gonna bring some resumes and hand them out (laughs) you never know okay well thank you so much for coming on the show yeah thank you for having me this has been really fun thanks all right well that's our show for today see you next time on the rebel show